welcome to my channel. So this is another episode of What Went Wrong With This Photo. This is Adam Kyle Jackson. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so that way you don't miss any of these photo editing opportunities. And so I've got this show. The idea was for people to submit their raw files to me and I edit them in my style. And so I've got this first one. I've been doing my files up until now. So this is the first victim that has a Canon and I am a Nikon shooter, tried and true. So I've never actually edited a Canon file. So I'm actually excited today to see what that is going to look like. Uh, full disclosure, I haven't practiced at all on this image. So what you see today is what you get. And I'm not going to do anything screwball in the editing here. And, you know, if there's something I mess up on, you're, you're going to see it right there in the flesh. You're going to see me in the raw. The other thing about this image is this guy's a new photographer and self-proclaimed new photographer. So they, they bought a camera, went out to the beach, took a shot, said, hey, I think it looks good. They even went and edited it, which is impressive to me because when I first started doing photography, I shot like JPEG for the first six months, unfortunately. And so just for this person to go out and get it done and then take a shot at editing, I got nothing but respect for this photographer. What are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about three things. So the technical ability of the photographer, meaning did they get the focus right? Did they get the composition right? Did they crop it right? Did they get any of the exposure settings right? Did they pick the right lens for the job? Some of those things are up to artistic interpretation, which leads me into the artistic approach. So number two is art. And I'm looking at the image and it's a yes or no. So it's not like a, I can put a number on this. It's a, is this something I would post to Instagram? Is this something I would like if I saw an Instagram? And is this something that I would go and hang on the wall? And so that's all up for interpretation. This is my opinion. Number three is the raw editing skills and taking the raw file. And did we make the raw file look better? Did we improve the situation? Because editing can go both ways. You can make a raw file come to life or you can just destroy the image and Lord knows I've destroyed a few images in my career. So today we're going to go into Lightroom, we're going to go into Photoshop, and we're going to go into DxO Nick collection of filters. So those are the three things. So if you wanted to follow along or try this at home, those are the three softwares I'm using today. So let's get to it. So I'm going to switch over here to my screen and go into Lightroom. So here's the raw file. Hmm, what is going on here? So again, full disclosure, I have not practiced. This is me looking at this thing, going through it for the first time. I can tell you right now, just by looking at this file, it's out of focus. That's a bummer because moving forward now is going to be a challenge because if I'm going to find a different crop, which I looks like I'm going to have to find a different crop here. Every time you crop in, you're going to be zooming in and you're going to exaggerate or accentuate anything that's out of focus. And so that's, that's problem number one. So the technical ability of this photographer, he needs to work on his focus moving forward. Uh, another technical thing that I'm noticing here is that shot at F 22. So I, I understand why they would have wanted to choose F 22, because if you read, you know, the camera photography blogs that says the higher the F stop, you're going to be more likely in focus across the entire frame. So I, I get that. But what we're, what's happening here is you're arbitrarily lowering the shutter speed. And that could have led to some of this out of focus issue. Maybe wind was blowing against the camera. If it was on a tripod, if it was handheld, certainly at one sixtieth of the second, yeah, you, you're probably going to be out of focus. So I would have lowered the F stop. I, today I shoot at F 5.6 and I find that that is the optimal for some of the lenses that I use for sharpness. And so at F 22, it also, the image is going to be soft likely. Let's see, what do we got here? What, what, what lens are we working with today? And it would probably be good for everybody to know what camera this, he's shooting with. So it's Canon EOS R, it's the mirrorless, and we've got a 24 to 105 Canon RF lens. So I am not a Canon expert by any stretch of the imagination, but 
to me, that's a good lens to take out for getting a wide array of landscape photography. So let's look at the next technical aspect of this image. Okay, so 61 millimeters is his focal length of choice here, which is interesting choice to me. Now you've got a 24 millimeter lens. Let's let's use the 24 millimeters and capture more of the image. So that way, if you do need to go crop, you've got more material to work with. And just looking at this right now, let's pull up the exposure with 61 millimeters f22 out of focus what we've got is a compressed out of focus image and you can see here dun 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 we've got some looks to be washed ashore seaweed that's totally out of focus so this is unusable for this frame gonna have to crop out probably this one too this seaweed up here is probably gonna have to be cropped out and looking at the choice of this photographer for the composition on the technical side of it, it looks like they tried to maybe get the rule of one thirds down here where the line of the horizon matches up. It's still not all the way there. So what, what's happened here is with this crop that we're going to have to now do because of this out of focus problem is it's going to create a disproportionate amount of sky to the foreground. And I don't think it's going to look balanced. And so I think that if it was me, I would have walked out onto the beach and utilized that reflection that you see right here from the water. So I think it's a missed opportunity all around sitting at 61 millimeters. I would have set it at 24 millimeters, walked onto the beach, maybe even handheld at F whatever the lowest stop is, probably F4 on this lens, and had a really high shutter speed handheld, just getting every shot angle I could possibly get of let's back off this exposure of these sun rays reflecting into the water. So next time I would advise get onto the beach, get into the scene. And there's another thing here from composition. I never shoot dead on into a beach shot into the horizon line. To me, it just doesn't generate interest unless you've got like giant California Mavericks waves that you're trying to get moving towards you. I mean, we're talking about the coast of Texas here where there's maybe three, four foot waves. It, it just, there's not a lot of interest generated here. And there's a lot of missed opportunity here as well because he could have shot down the coast and used the contrast of the sand and the reflection waterline and then see some of the foam and the waves and everything all together. Plus, give this image a lot more uh, depth and sense of giganticness because we've got this huge sky here. And we've got this probably huge beach. If I know this beach, this is Padre Island, so I've shot here before. And you just want to get the scale of how large this place is. And here it just it's compressed. And so you're missing on opportunity of the scale. And so next time I would advise to go down the horizon line, down the beach, put the horizon line dead center in the shot. So you'd want the horizon line in the middle of the picture. So that way, if you want to do a crop, you can crop either sky heavy or foreground heavy, your choice with everything being in focus. So those, those are some of the technical things I see going on here with this photo. Let's just see if there's anything else going on. The ISO, that's right. So let's take a look at the exposure. So already you can tell that the foreground is way underexposed. There's a few things going on with this in that you don't want to overexpose the highlights. So I can understand why they pick this particular exposure because as you push the highlights up, you know, you blow out the sky, but now the foreground is exposed perfectly. So it's the highlights I think were driving this person's decision when they're holding the camera. But let me reveal something here. Since this is one of those Canon uh, full frame mirrorless, I mean, there's probably a pretty decent dynamic range he's got to work with. Could have probably pushed the exposure. So let's start off with the native exposure and let's push the exposure up to see how much more data he could have gotten prior to clipping the details. And I'm still going, I'm still going, pushing the exposure up. There we go. So about 1.3 stops. More information could have been at this given exposure gotten onto the sensor and then into Lightroom. And so right now, what we're going to be dealing with is severely underexposed foreground, which is going to likely create some noise issues, desaturation, etc. So that is going to be a challenge, I think, moving forward throughout the entire 
uh, edit here is that this is underexposed. Even the sky is underexposed. So next time, consider exposing to the right as far as possible, checking your camera for the highlights clipping, and then backing off subtly until you get to a point where the highlights aren't clipping, but you're getting as much information as possible onto that sensor with respect to the shadows. So moving forward, I think we've pretty much ripped apart all the technical issues with this image. And moving on to composition. So looking at this overall, I'm going to have to crop. And so let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So before we move on to any other aspect of this image, let's, let's fix this crop. Let's fix some of this out of focus issue because it seems to be really bad in the foreground, not so bad in the middle. The sky still looks a little bit out of focus. So I'm going to pick the 4 or 5 Instagram and see if we can crop this thing out. So if I crop like this, let me pull back the exposure so we can see what's going on in the sky. If I crop like this, it's going to be sky heavy and it just doesn't look balanced to me. So I think I'm going to have to do an extreme crop here, which is unfortunate because it is out of focus and the more I zoom in on this thing, is probably going to accentuate it. And plus, it's also unfortunate because the more I crop in on it, it's underexposed, meaning I'm going to reveal a lot more of the noise in the shadows. But I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and crop because to my eye, it doesn't look balanced. And so when I'm picking a crop, I am going to try to follow the rule of one-thirds to the best of my ability with respect to all the other obstacles I have here. So I've got this bush down here just bothering me. Let's get rid of that bush. I want a dead center of the sun in the middle here. And I want to leave some details across the top. I'm going to take this line of the cloud up here and put it into the corner. And I'm not going to exactly follow the rule of one-thirds because I don't have enough foreground to work with. So give yourself enough data to work with. 24 millimeter would have been perfect here. And shooting at the horizon line would have worked a lot better. So there's my crop. So now taking a look at this crop, it looks a little more balanced to me. I don't have the blurry bush. I've got a sky that's dead center, so we've got a sun as the focal point. And I've eliminated some of the graininess from the bottom of the frame that was severely underexposed. So I think this is going to work to our advantage. So artistic. Let's move on to number two. Artistic. The art value. And like I said, this is a yes or no, so drum roll. I'm going to go with yes on this one because it's a sunset, sunrise shot. It's got to be sunrise. This is Texas. And the rays are interesting coming through the clouds, so I like the idea. Uh, I wish I wish that the foreground was better, but we can't fix that. If it was if it was going to be a no, it would be because the foreground was underexposed and just it's not interesting. But the sky is so good here that yeah, I think this is something I would if I could get this right, the exposure right, if I could uh, you know get the edit right, I'd probably post this to Instagram or I'd like it on Instagram and I might even hang it on the wall. So I think good job here envisioning a shot and using the sky to your advantage. Uh, next time, get that foreground in focus and make sure you're in the subject matter and getting a good perspective shot. So the art, uh, yeah, we're going to go with yes. Now on to the edit. So this is the tough part. And so number three, we're going through the edit aspects. And like I said, this is a new photographer, brand new photographer. Probably this is the first time they went and shot raw. So for them to even go and attempt to do an edit is impressive. Most folks will stick the thing in JPEG or raw plus JPEG and shoot until they're comfortable with the camera. Not this gentleman. They went full bore. We're going to go out going to do it. We're going to take care of this. We're going to get the shot and we're going to edit it. And I think overall the, the edit has got a lot of work. And so the edit is even more underexposed in my opinion than what the original shot was. So it, it, it actually created a bigger problem. So here we are side by side and let me, let me move myself out of the way. So I've got this side-by-side -side presentation of the edit, his edit, the original photographer's edit versus the raw file. And you can see they, they tried to crop probably because they recognized the focused issues, but there's not enough foreground here. It's just totally sky. And then it's not even apparent that this is a beach, really. It could be a lake. It could be anything because it's so underexposed. So the edit in this case didn't help the raw file. And then the blues. So we've got a blue situation going on here. 
And in the history of my photography, blues have plagued me with oversaturation, banding, all kinds of issues. So it's not something you want to like necessarily add. So we, it's like a new problem had been created now that wasn't in the original RAW file by adding blues to this edit. So this is an unnecessary issue and it doesn't look right because then, as you can see in the original, there's no blue. So looking at the clouds, they're just totally washed out and just blown out dark. So we've lost a lot of detail in what could have potentially been a super contrasty pop highlight detail and cloud scenario here. So with this edit, it's got some work to do. So let's move on to my edit. Let's see if we can do something with this photo. Let's start, shall we? Let's move this. Let's move me out of the way so you can see the controls and let's get rolling. So I'm gonna run through this. I'm gonna blow through this. We gotta get this done. Typically I take about four to five hours. You don't wanna sit here and see me do four, four to five hours of just pure editing and most of the time, it takes me a week just to get one of these images done. So I'm going to be rolling through this. So if you want to ask me any questions, put them in the comments below. I will respond to you. And let's get going. Let's go this highlights, whites up here. Yeah, so the, the, the whites are really underexposed. So I'm going to pull the whites, highlights down, shadows, blacks up. I want to see what I'm looking at here. And again, we're going to have to go back and crop. So let's pull up the exposure a little bit so I can see the whole issue here. And there seems to be some distortion on this lens. Aha, I didn't do the lens corrections. There we go. It flattened it out a little bit. It's still kind of curvy on the horizon line. So I'm going to bump up the distortion a little bit. See if I can flatten out that horizon line. And I think that did it. So now I'm going to go crop. And we're going to pick a crop that's going to get rid of these out of focus bushes. And I'm going to make sure I stick with the Instagram format because that's what we're talking about right now is we're going to post this to Instagram. Make sure that we have a likable photo. And I want to keep the details up in the sky. I don't think I'm going to stress too badly over the rule of one thirds because I don't have a lot of landscape here. I don't have enough of the foreground to really do what I would want to do with this image. And I'm going to get it right up against that bush before actually revealing the bush. We're gonna dead center the sun and try to fix this curvy horizon line. So it looks like the earth is a globe based on this photo. You heard it here. Uh, that looks to be good. It's still a little unbalanced. It's not balanced. I'm gonna push it. So I'm working up against, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this angle of the cloud to match to the corner at the top right but also not reveal the out of focus bush that's just sitting right here on the line. And I think this is about as good as I'm gonna do. Plus I also like this detail up here with the highlights. It's gonna make a nice vignette. So I think I'm done. So here we have our crop done. And now I'm gonna sharpen this image to see if I can impact any of this out of focus stuff and make it a little better situation moving forward. I'm gonna pull the sharpening up. I usually match the amount to the detail on sharpening and then pull the masking up. You can go ahead and look at it with the option key to see where masking, where you're going to mask out and affect the image with sharpening. So I don't want to sharpen the areas in the sky, but I do want the foreground sharp. So I'm going to pull that masking up. Plus, I also want to sharpen where the sun's at and those details where those highlights are. So I want some nice distinct lines. So that looks good. Let's get that going now. Next step is let's go find. Let's go find the problem area. And the way I do that is I use dehaze and I take dehaze to 100% and it blows out the image for me automatically. But what I found is that dehaze is actually a pretty good algorithm for showing me problem areas that when I continue pushing this image, which I'm gonna do further, that it would exaggerate the blues. It might have some out of focus stuff that's gonna look exaggerated. It might have contrast that's gonna be blowing out the shadows versus highlights. All kinds of issues revealed right here with one slider. So right now, I can understand why this photographer's edit was too blue. Because if you look at the histogram here, blue is just waving at us. And so I know that blue is going to be an issue moving forward. So I'm going to go to the HSL color panel, the hue, saturation, luminance. I'm going to pull down the saturation until it looks good to me. There's no right or wrong here. You can leave a little bit of the blue. You can take a lot of the blue out. 
I usually round out around negative 30 on any photo that I'm doing. Blues have been the bane of my existence. But here, it's, it's a really powerful blue going on in this image. It's dominating the image. And it may even be the purples too. And if you're not sure what color is affecting the image, you can take the slider on the saturation to 0 to 100, 0 to 100, and see if you see anything blinking at you. So right here I can see the purple really isn't affecting much. But if I do screw with it too much, it's going to create banding across the sky. So I don't want that. I uh, think that's good on the blue. Now, another thing about this blue that dehaze is revealing is that it's underexposed. So this also explains why the photographer's initial edit looked underexposed in the clouds. It was because it was not managing the blues properly. And the more you saturate, the more you go and add contrast, it's just going to look dark and washed out. So there's a little trick here. We can take the blue luminance up. And that might bring back some of the detail in the, in the sky. And also another trick with bringing the blues up is that usually in these sunrise photos is that the blue is going to impact the brightness of the white foam in the water and the waves, which will give you some more contrast in the foreground, which we definitely want. And when you're modifying the blue, make sure you are modifying the aqua at the same time. I have found that if you don't mess with aqua when you mess with blue, you can create some blue banding in your sky. So I think I've got the blues where I want them. I think that's going to work. So now next step is oranges, yellows, those sunrise colors. And I'm not liking the color here. And this is the unmodified as shot out of the camera. And it's just looking yellow. So I want to make it more of a orangey tone, but not like tangerine orange where it looks exaggerated. But I do want the, I want the oranges to look different. And I want to move the yellow out of the green spectrum and move it towards the orange spectrum to get rid of any green looking cast here that I'm seeing. So I'm going to I'm going to exaggerate this effect to see what that looks like. So here's here's green. Here's orange. So I noticed that if I move it towards the orange spectrum, I'm getting rid of some of those sun rays. So there's going to be a detriment here if I actually mess with it too much. So it's just a little bit. Let's move the oranges to orange. So you can see you can make it a blood red sky. You don't want that. Or you can make it a green ugly yellow sky you don't want that so let's just subtly move the oranges down a bit on the hue to give it a little red glow and now on the saturation I think we're gonna have a problem moving forward with the oranges saturation I think that we're gonna have a problem with the yellow saturation moving forward so I'm gonna pull both of these down a bit and we don't want to wash the image out but you don't want to have this exaggerated HDR looking tone it just doesn't look right but I think, I think we're good right here. So we're going to take dehaze back to zero. And here we are with our washed out image. So this, this looks neutral now. It looks a lot better, in my opinion, than where the raw file started out. Let's go look at the raw file. So raw file underexposed. It's got a green cast to it. Now we've balanced out the exposure. And I think the oranges and the yellows don't have as much of a green cast. So you can do a test. You can take this uh, white balance dropper tool. And what I typically do is I try to find a color in here that I just don't like. And I see what happens if I pick that as a target neutral to the white balance that will adjust around this color I don't like. And what it's doing here, it's telling me that it's got too much yellow in it, which I think I knew that up front. But it also had a green cast, so it's pushed the, it's pushed the greens, pushed the red hue in the tint up. Even more so if I pick some of these clouds. So maybe we need to stick with this. And I think I'm okay with the white balance now. So now let's take a look at the overall exposure. Now that I've got the white balance, the colors where I want them, let's take a look at this thing. So we know it's underexposed. I don't want to lose the detail in the sky by making it washed out like this. So I'm going to have to sacrifice a little bit of quality here because as I'm pushing up this exposure, it's going to, it's going to create some noise in the shadows. So I'm going to I'm going to even out right about here and I'm going to use a graduated uh, neutral density filter tool here to fix the sky and also fix the foreground relative to the exposure on the sky. Now my sliders are still at negative 100 on highlights, negative 100 on the whites, plus 100 on shadows, plus 100 on blacks. And so now here's where I'll go do small adjustments to see what I do with this image moving forward. And I think 
it's got a lot of room for adding contrast. So I'm pulling the black. So this is blacks down to a negative 100. You can see didn't do anything, didn't blow out the shadows. So there's a lot of room for contrast here. So you can do one of two things. You can affect the entire image, which I don't typically do. I'll go grab a filter tool, pick it down to the horizon line, and I'm going to modify the sky. And you can actually do a range mask. You can pick just a color. You can pick the luminance. Right now, I'm just going to leave it alone and see what happens here. I'm going to make sure the exposure looks right. So I'm going to pull this down until about where I think this should have been. And so it's going to be a challenge because you have this super bright sun, but then you don't want to... You don't want the clouds to look washed out. So I can understand what happened in his attempt at editing with the clouds completely dissipating. He was trying to focus on those highlights. And you can you can really do that with a radial adjustment tool. We'll show you that here in just a second. So I'm going to pull the whites up in just the sky. And it's starting to clip. So I'm going to pull it up right to where it clips. And we're going to pull the highlights down because I want the I want the colors to come back. I want it to saturate, and I also want to see the details. So the whites up, highlights down, and let's see if we can pull the blacks down. And there, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the contrast. So the clouds are darker now, but it's not completely blown out. As I reduce the exposure, the clouds didn't turn blue, which I didn't want, and the orange didn't turn obnoxious tangerine orange, which works great so now let's do the same thing to the foreground let's see if we can fix this foreground and that might actually work instead of having that sand totally exposed because it's not there's not any detail in sand so you're not really looking at anything so you can use the underexposure of the sand to your advantage without having to add noise to your image because we have this highlight dark detail here i think this is going to work so i'm, I'm actually going to use the same exact filter that I used for the sky on the foreground. And now I'm going to look at the small image up here at the top. And this is where I can quickly gauge to see if I got any global issues on this image. I really can't see it here. That's not how my eyes work. So if I've zoomed in on it, I'm, I'm just looking at the wave. I'm looking up here and I can see right now that the glow of the orange is exaggerated. It's probably because I got these filters at the wrong spot. So let's move this down a bit. And that looks a little better now, less exaggerated. And I didn't want to affect the waves, so I want the waves to pop out. So now let's go fix the waves. Let's go let's go fix this out of focusness here, and let's add a focal point to this image. So I'm grabbing a radial adjustment tool. You can add, you can add color. You can reduce the blacks. You can you can do anything to the exposure to this one particular section of the image. And so I'm going to increase the exposure because this is where the sun rays are coming down. But I'm also going to hit it with a ton of clarity because I want those waves to pop. I want it to be crisp. I might even try some texture here a little bit and then maybe even some dehaze and there we go. So you can see now that there's a focal point. It hit right here where this this, this light's coming down. I want this wave to be bright. We're going to fix some of this stuff with dodge and burn later on in Photoshop so I'm not stressing too much about it right now. I just want to get the exposure right here in Lightroom before I move over into the Photoshop realm. Well, I, th I think we've got a pretty decent looking image here. I think we're getting close. We're getting close to export to Photoshop. So let's mess with the tone curve a little bit. Let's pull the blacks up. Let's pull them back down again. Let's put the mids back up. Make sure we're not overexposing in the sky. And I think I liked it without the tone curve. Yes, I'm going to leave it flat. So I'm going to adjust the tones over in Photoshop. So now that I've reduced the exposure in both the foreground and the sky, I can affect the entire exposure to see if there's any other global issues here as I'm moving forward. So I think I do need to bump up the exposure a little bit, and we're good. So another quick adjustment that I make before I go over to Photoshop to see if there's massive issues going on in this photo is I hit the contrast to 100%. And the reason I do that is I want to see what exaggerates. I want to see what blows out. So right now, actually, that, that, we can print it right now. This looks good. So at 100%, I can see now that 
The edits that I've made so far in Lightroom have benefited this image to the point that I can have 100% contrast and it still looks good. It did underexpose, however, quite significantly in the sand. I know that I said that we wanted to do that, so I'm going to pull that exposure up just a bit to hedge my bets for when we move forward and adding contrast and things in Photoshop. So let's move that contrast back down. And, and now the exposure looks right. So the contrast revealed to me that it was way underexposed still in the foreground. All right. Double check everything before we move over into the next steps. I could add a little bit of color calibration here, but I don't want to go yellow in the sky. I don't want it to be exaggerated. But also, it might benefit it a bit with some of the color contrast later on. So I'm going to leave the saturation here at about 50. No vignetting here in Lightroom. We do that in Photoshop. And no split toning today because I think that would exaggerate the sky too much. You could go split tone. You could make this more of a reddish hue, a pink, but I like what I'm looking at right now, so we're going to leave it as is. Okay, next up is export to Photoshop. And while we're waiting on this, because this takes a bit, why do I export to Photoshop? I've had this question asked of me several times, and the reason is is, I like stacking the layers in Photoshop. I like combining the layers in a group, duplicating the group, merging the group, creating a new base layer without losing any of my progress. So if I screwed something up, all I gotta do is just remove the layer, go back to where I started. It's not so easy to do in Lightroom. You can still do it, but it just creates another layer right next to the layer. And the filters are a little more cumbersome in my opinion to use in Lightroom. And I can just get more detail adjustments in Photoshop overall. All right, so now we've made it to Photoshop. So we've made the jump from Lightroom to Photoshop. That way we can create layers here. We can add some filters. We can do dodge and burn. I love the camera raw filter here. There's some aspects to it that I use. I usually use it for my vignette. So there's just a lot of benefits for me in the way I edit in Photoshop. That doesn't mean you can't do all of these things in Lightroom. The layers part might be a little difficult in Lightroom, so there is a benefit here. So first thing I do is I go and I create me a base layer that is always going to be my base layer. This would be starting point number one. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And right now I want to remove all the noise. So Google Nick tool, let's get me out of the way of the edit. Google Nick tools Right here, there's a selective tool that I use every time I come into Photoshop. First step is define. And what this is going to do is going to measure the noise in the image that we've carried over from the camera. We've carried over from our edits, my edits in Lightroom that may have added additional noise. And I don't want to propagate or exaggerate those noise issues moving forward in any of these steps that we're about to do in Photoshop. And for the most part, the automatic algorithm applies a profile and it really does get rid of the noise and it helps so much. And especially after I go and start sharpening and adding some other clarity structure, those kinds of things, it's not going to look grainy. So I use this for my Milky Way stuff too all the time and it works fantastic. So now that I've got my noise free base layer, I'm going to hit it with Color Effects Pro. And Color Effects Pro has got a series of filters here. Let me make sure I'm not hiding anything with an image. Let's move me out of the way. And so here we are with Color Effects Pro. And I have a series of filters. I've got some saved presets, but I'm going to take you through step by step. So I'm going to add a filter. I always start off with the Pro Contrast. And it does exactly what it sounds. It's going to add contrast to the image. It's going to dynamically edit the image. It's also going to correct the contrast, the tones, the colors. You can also correct color cast here. And I would assume that it's going to try to add blues because we've added a lot of yellow in Lightroom and it did. So I'm not going to mess with color cast because I do want a yellow cast here. Correct contrast looks good. Dynamic contrast looks even better. So there's no right or wrong here. Just do what you think looks good. I also go to the loop. And I make sure the lighting looks right. I make sure that the highlights, the shadows look right. Make sure there's no clipping going on in the details. If there is clipping, you can protect them by using the shadows and highlights tool here. 
We're not going to worry about that right now. I am going to remove some of the pro contrast from the foreground because I don't want it exaggerated. I don't want any contrast in this sand because it, there's no details here to begin with. And I think adding any contrast additionally to the sand is going to create a noise issue moving forward or create an underexposure situation. And in order to remove some pro contrast from certain areas of the image, all you have to do is just use these control points. You can use a plus or a minus. Minus reduces the effect. You can adjust where this affects, how broad you want the effect to happen, and you can adjust the opacity of this modification. So right now I just want 100% gone, no pro contrast in the sand. And I might also remove it from the clouds at the top because I don't like gray, muddy clouds. So you can see I removed it from the clouds. It lightened up the clouds right there. And then this area right here in the initial edit from the initial photographer was completely black. So we don't want to go that route. So let's get rid of some of the contrast here. But I do want the contrast to be punchy here in the sky. I also want these uh, sun rays to come out and hit you in the face and the ocean to look crystal clear crisp so right now i think this looks good from a contrast perspective so now secret weapon for sunsets in the dxo nick platform is skylight filter you gotta be careful with it though because you can make a giant tangerine orange mess quickly and you also don't want to apply it to blues because it has a tendency to turn the blues purple which i do not want that so i'm going to go, go again i'm going to use these control points and i'm going to modify only what i want so i put it to 100 percent strength so put skylight filter to 100 percent strength so i can see clearly where this is affecting the image so you can see here's here's the base image and here's the like the insane sunset so you leave it at this post to instagram people tell you hdr it what we're going to do is i'm going to pick selectively and I don't want to create this nasty orange crush banding, but I do want the sun to look a certain way. So let's go minimize this in the clouds. And you can use positive or negative. So if I was going to do positive, I'd go pick the orange spots. But I'm going to use negative right now to get rid of it in the clouds to see what the orange looks like against the soft bluish background of the clouds. I also don't want the purple hue in the clouds. And I can expand this and it'll impact all the colors within that color range, removing the skylight filter. So you can see that I removed the skylight filter from underneath the sun and it just totally washed out. So I didn't want it as orange as it was. So I'm going to bump up the opacity to get me some orange back. But I don't want it to look exaggerated against the other pieces of the image. But I do want the orange up here in the sun. I do want this. And remember, we're 100% strength, so it is exaggerated to begin with. So I'm going to get rid of it here because there's some banding going on. So I'm going to move it up until I see banding, and I'm going to back off. And that looks pretty good. And then down here, this looks ridiculous. This is not, this is not going to work. So let's pull the opacity back up. Now it's more of a smooth transition between the yellow and the orange. I don't want these exaggerated transitions between these colors. So far this looks great. So now let's back off the, the skylight filter to something more reasonable and let's see what the before and after is. So before, after. So you can see there's like a, just a glow. It, it added just a little bit of an effect to this image. Give it a little bit more punch in the tones. You can you can exaggerate it a little more. Mm, I don't I don't want the HDR look here. I want this to be more of a soft pastel because there wasn't a lot of color to begin with in the raw file. So you, you can't push color where, where color doesn't exist. That's what that's what that HDR look is. And let's settle out right about here. That is looking good. I like that. So the next step is let's go adjust the color a little bit. So I want to add some color to this and you got to be very careful. So Brilliance Warmth tool in DxO Nick, and I want to do that before Skylight Filter because I want the Skylight Filter to affect the saturated tones. I don't want to saturate the Skylight Filter, and I also do both of these filters before Pro Contrast because I want Pro Contrast to affect both these filters. So here we go. Let's add about mm, five. I don't want to oversaturate it. So six percent here. Let's go warm and see what happens. Wow, that looks good. Let's go cool. Super cool. Don't like that. So I think we're going to go to the warm side of things and we're going to leave it right about there. 
add a little bit of perceptual saturation, which will affect some of the colors relative to other colors, how we would perceive the tones. And I think I've got it. I think I nailed the brilliance and warmth. Just added just a little bit, just a little bit there. Now, next step is we could go Orton effect with this thing. Let's see what happens. So I use Glamour Glow. And Glamour Glow is like the one-stop shop, one step. You can add Orton effect. Works great. And it desaturates a little bit so it doesn't look so pungent when it's on the screen. And then we can go add some warmth to it using Glamour Glow. Because I, I definitely want to get rid of some of these purples and blue tones. And I think that looks good. I don't want Glamour Glow affecting the shadows here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect the shadows. I'm going to move the shadow slider up to 100%. And I don't want Glamour Glow impacting the sharp edges of my sun glowing through the clouds. So I'm going to minimize with a control point, get rid of it there. But I do want Glamour Glow to affect all the rest of the clouds because I want it to be soft. And that looks good. So that will give me a soft background to contrast against this sharp sky where the sun is and the sun rays. And I think I'm liking this. I'm going to add some saturation back. And there's no right or wrong. Sometimes I change my mind about 1500 times and I'll sit here and I'll click Glamour Glow back and forth and do A-B testing and then decide once and for all like I'm going to do right now. I don't want it on there. But you can use Glamour Glow to the Orton effect do to do the Orton effect and it actually works great on Milky Way stuff for smoothing out the dark areas of sky. So right now we're lacking some detail and that's what I recognize by putting the Glamour Glow on. It just totally washed out these details. So I'm going to use Detail Extractor and it does exactly what it sounds like it's going to do and that's going to be the very first step. I'm going to put this behind all the filters because I don't want to detail extract other modifications and you can see it's already added tons of structure to this. You got all the, the rays so I don't want to do is I don't want to add details to areas that should be smooth. So like the sand, I don't think we need to add details here because of the noise issues. I don't want this ugly banding brown looking spots gone in the sky. Don't need it in the clouds, but I do want these sun rays. I do want this area to be sharp and I want the waves definitely to pop. So I think I'm going to go through and I'm going to use the control points for minimizing the detail extractor effect in areas I don't want them. And I'm going to test this to see if we can do it the lazy way. Let's expand this out across the image. And I'm going to see if we can impact this entire sky. And it looks like it did. So it pulled out the details from the clouds. I don't want it up here in the corner. This looks a little weird here. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, so now it's A-B test. So I made a few modifications, removing Detail Extractor. And it's only impacting the areas that I want now. So I got the sun, the details here. And I think I'm going to even come back over here and get rid of this little band. And I'm going to reduce the size because I do want the sun ray. We're going to do that again. So you can put as many of these control points as you need to to get the sky looking the way you want. And that's the whole goal is get these sun rays to pop out at you. And I think we're happy now. All right, so here's where Dodge and Burn can come into play. You could go take this back into uh, Photoshop and go through and paint this thing to your heart's content with uh, lights, darks, highlights, shadows. And what I, what I like doing is I like adding another graduated neutral density filter, which if you actually had one on the camera for this type of exposure would have worked to a great effect. So that way you could expose the foreground properly without blowing out the highlights. But since we didn't have that, we're going to do that here. So right now it looks great. I'm going to leave it here. But I'm going to show you a trick. So what I typically do is I take the upper tonality down to negative 100%, blend to 0%, and I take the vertical shift down to the horizon line so I can see exactly where this is going to impact the image. I can't see it if I'm just making minor adjustments. So you can see a trend here. I make everything extreme before I back off of it so I can see exactly where these adjustments are going to modify my image. And so now with this graduated neutral density filter, I can see that the sky is mostly affected and now I'm going to add blend back until it just barely touches the tops of these waves. And I think that's right, right here. And I'm going to back off now. 
and about negative 14% added exactly what I was looking for for this image. And I'm going to add a little bit of punch to the lower tonality, which is the foreground. So now you can impact both the sky and the foreground at the same time. But going back to dodge and burn, let me give you an example here. So I'm going to do an extreme upper tonality, but I'm going to go back with the control points and reduce the effect of this filter on areas that I don't want it to impact, but I do want to capture the dark tones of the oranges. And so you can see as I'm doing this, the oranges are staying intact here, but the clouds are coming back. It's not impacting the orange tones, and we may leave it like this to some degree, and you can go back and impact each one of these individually with the opacity, which now that I'm looking at this, this looks pretty good now. And it's still extreme, but I'm going to go back to balance out this exposure on the edges because this now looks washed out. So we're going to add back some of the darkness from the filter, but not too dark. It looks like we need one also right here on the edge. Perfect. And I'm going to move this one over to the edge and see if we can impact all. There we go. Now I'm going to continue moving forward with lowering the opacity on each one of these just to get the exposure just right. I want it right. And this looks a little washed out. That looks good. And I'm just eyeballing it. So there's, there's no right or wrong here. Just eyeballing what I think the exposure should look like. And this is definitely washed out right here. So now let's look. Let's look at the difference. Let's look at the difference what a graduated neutral density filter can do when you use it to do a, like a, a, a quick style dodge and burn edit. So you can see before, after. So it saturated all those oranges. It pretty much left the clouds alone. It did cause some oversaturation here, and it did create a band of highlight here, but that's something we can easily fix, and that's probably because the vertical shift isn't correct, and that is right. So let's pull that up. So now I can see where this graduated neutral density filter is really affecting this image. And I think that's good. So I'm now going to move this back to more of a reasonable exposure before, after. And I'm going to bump up the foreground just a little bit, just a little bit. Looking good. So let's go back to Skylight Filter real quick. There's still some banding going on in the sky that I do not like. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of that. So this is about as good as it's going to get right now. And then we can go back to Pro Contrast to see how overall this image is being impacted so I can pull the contrast up. You can see I seriously saturated the yellows, which looks good when you have normal contrast. So I'm going to leave that alone for right now and maybe correct the contrast a little bit to get rid of some of those yellow tones. And it looks good. Another trick that I use is the Darken Lighten Center tool and this is a portrait tool, in my opinion. So you would use this to go highlight someone's face and darken the background to give an effect of a focal point. So right now our focal point is the sun. So I'm going to make that the focal point. You can pick and place the center. And you can see now I can adjust the exposure just on that particular focal point. And I can also create a dark background. So you can make a super dramatic image here, which we might go that route. So there's so many different options here. You can make a super dramatic image and create this cool looking saturated orange where you've got this focal point. You've kind of blown out the shadows areas where there wasn't enough detail anyway to matter. And you've made the center of the at focus here. The center of tension for this image is going to be the sun. And again, with the dodge and burn theory, you can take control points here and you can say, okay, I've made this too dark. I'm going to reduce that. I've made this too dark because we want the water to be highlighted. And I've made this too dark. But I don't want this to be light, so I'm going to take that back down again. And now we have a really interesting foreground and a really interesting backdrop with the sun. 
highlighting the waves. And I think I'm going to stick with this. So this is after, before, after. And I might pull back up the exposure a bit here. I might reduce the center size so it only affects where that sun is at. And then I'm going to pull the border back a little bit more. So this is affecting the entire luminosity of the exposure. And I think I'm happy right here. So overall, I'm happy with this edit. And anything that I don't like here is we're going to go fix and dodge and burn in just a second. So I'm going to export this back, saving image back into Photoshop. And once we're back in Photoshop, this is where we get creative and we do some painting. And I'm going to move me out of the way again. It's creating the layer. So what's cool about Photoshop and layers, and this is the reason I go to Photoshop instead of Lightroom, is this exact reason right here, is we made some seriously exaggerated edits using all those tools you just saw. And if I don't like them, I can just back off the opacity of this particular layer and use it to a artistic effect. And so you can see now, let's go, let's do an A-B test of the image. So here is before, here's after. Now let's go look at the raw file. That's before. Let's look at the initial edit by the photographer and let's look at where we're at right now. And so you can see between my edit and the initial photographer edit is I've changed the crop, I've changed the tones, I've changed the colors, I've brought the detail out of the sky, I've accentuated the detail where the sun's at, added the oranges where they needed to be. You can see the water in the foreground and I used the underexposure of the sand to my advantage here in this image and tried to get more of a reflection in the water here of this sun. And so now the next step is I'm going to look at this from a distance and I'm going to see what looks exaggerated. And so right now I can tell you that this there's a band of brightness across the horizon line. I don't like that at all. It's probably going to be very difficult to fix. And it's probably my fault with the graduated neutral density filter, but too late now, which it's really not because you can take this opacity and there you go. So you can take the edit and say I only want to have certain amount of that effect on my image and we might actually do that right now. That looks more natural while still adding some saturation and details to the foreground. So I think I like that. So let's leave it like that. So the next step is once you get to a point where you want to be, make sure you group from layers. This is key. Duplicate this group. And what we're trying to do is create a new base layer, a starting point, and I'm going to merge this group. So now I haven't lost my any of the any of the edits that I've done to to date is still sitting right here in this group. I can go back if I don't like something. I just blow this one away, start all over. I haven't lost my progress. This is very difficult to do in Lightroom. Again, another one of the reasons I use Photoshop. So here we are with some bright, exaggerated areas. So I'm going to go get the dodge and burn tools. So we're going to open up a burn tool. Set the exposure about 21%, and we're just going to click along the horizon line. I don't draw, because if I draw, chances are I'm going to be a little heavy-handed with the mouse, and you're going to see where I drew, and I don't want that to happen. And that, that fixed it. So that actually fixed the issue in the sky. So now I don't have this super bright band. And I think everything else is good on the dark, so I'm not going to do any more dodge. So now I think we're good on the sky. So there's a band that was sitting at the horizon line that I did not like. I fixed it with some burn. Now we're going to go to dodge because I think there's nothing else in this image I'm going to do the burn on. I say that famous last words. I'll probably go back. So what I want to do now is I want to get these waves to pop. And the way to do that is to really focus on the whites here. Now you can create a new layer. You notice I did not create a new layer by doing dodge and burn. That's a best practice, but since I've got my group here, I don't really worry about it too much. Now if you do want to affect the opacity, you should do a duplicate layer and pull back in case you wanted to say only 10%, 20% of your dodge and burn edits here, but I'm doing this right now to save time. We're going to move forward with dodge and burn on this layer, and I'm just going to paint into the highlights here ever so subtle because I want the water to pop and then check back and forth 
And as you can see, that wave, the curl of that wave is now readily apparent. You can see it. And I think there's still a few more opportunities in here to get some highlights going. And it helps to look at it from a distance, so that way you can see the overall scope of the image. Because when you're up close, you don't really see how globally you've adjusted the image relative to the other parts. So I think we're good. That looks good. Now let's move on to the clouds. And I want this right here to be my focus, right here. I want it to be peeking through the cloud, I want the sun to be just beaming through. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to make sure that these are as bright as they possibly can be. I'm not going to worry too much about overlapping the, the shadows and highlights. It, it just doesn't make much of a difference in my experience. You could actually get down into the nitty gritty detail per pixel, reduce this brush size down to nothing. And we can do that here, but I, I found it just doesn't really make much of a difference. So you can be as detailed as you want. You can be as much of an artist as you want. And I found the sun. There it is. So let's make this the sun. Let's make this the focal point. And we may even go back and add a radial filter here with some more yellow tone. And I'm going to reduce the size. So we do need to get into the nitty gritty here because I found the sun. And I don't want this highlighting to overflow and create banding in my shadows. But I want this to be super, super strong, very glow, coming from the sun, glowy, glowy. Now let's take a look. That looks fantastic. So now I've got a nice little line here of glow. And if you, if you went a little too heavy handed, a little trick here, is you can hit it with the with the burn tool and back it off a little bit and it looks good so now i'm going to go back with burn and i'm going to kind of outline where these highlights are all right i think i like what the sun looks like now so now let's go look at the clouds and get the highlights in the clouds going so here, this area could be brighter, this could be brighter, that could be brighter. And you just go through and you, and you eyeball it. What could be brighter, what could be darker? And I think even in the water here, it could be, it could be brighter. Because as I'm going through the sky and, and adding brightness to it, you really need to consider the foreground. So there's a big no-no. Don't make the foreground more, more bright than the sky, because it just doesn't look right. And so... I'm going to come back over here and add a little bit more glow to this because we can see the sun now. Looks good. Up here. So there's no right or wrong. Just go through, make your edits. That, see so right here, I think I made a mistake, so I made it look too hazy, so let's get rid of that. And I think I'm going to go back through and do a burn in between some of these sun rays, just to get the sun rays to pop. Very subtle. Very subtle edits here. It's right up against that sun ray. And you've seen photos where people have really made exaggerated sun rays. I don't like doing that. I think it doesn't look right, but... You could do that here. This is probably a candidate for that. You could go and draw, 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 and back off. But I don't think we're going to do that here. So I'm going to duplicate the layer now because I'm done with dodge and burn. And so the next step is I'm going to go into Viveza 2. So Viveza 2 is where you can add structure. You can continue modifying the colors. I like the shadow adjustment tool here. It's, it's broad. Let me move me over a little bit. Let's move this. Let's get this a little bigger so you can see. Now, with the shadow adjustment tool, I'm going to show you what this does. You can wash the image out or you can really take the image down to the max. And so I think there's some room actually to add some contrast by adding some dark back to the shadows. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast so I can see the sky pop. So now you can see all that dodge and burn effect is now coming alive. And we can add a little brightness to this. 
Uh, maybe back off the saturation just a tad. Never can have too much saturation. And I think I'm going to go a little more warm. And that's it. That's it. That was what it needed. Structure. Let's see if we can add some structure to this without just actually destroying the image. Because structure can destroy your image. Let's go extreme with it. I don't think it needs it. You can actually go reduce structure to give it more of an Orton effect. Kind of more of a, a hazy, soft focus look. But uh, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. That looks good. So let's go back to Photoshop with our Viveza 2 layer. And let's go compare against our Color Effects Pro edit and our Dodge and Burn edit and see if there is an improvement. And if there's not, we get rid of the layer or we reduce the opacity. And so I've got the beach ball of death. So next step after this Viveza 2 edit is I take it into Color Effects Pro and I modify the vignette, make it look just right. I might add some sharpening, may do some noise reduction. I also might mess with the tone curve a little bit and maybe even mess with the HSL, the hue saturation luminance. And so here we are with the Viveza. So let's go A-B test Viveza versus Color Effects Pro. And that, that's exactly what this image needed. It needed more contrast. It needed a little bit more warmth. It just needed a little bit of everything. And so now I've got it where I want it. So the next step is let's go take a look at it from our group. I'm going to look at the group that we started with. Here's beginning. Okay, I can see a problem. So now we, let's go back and make sure I'm on the burn tool. I've got a little too much going on here. And that's where the A-B test can really help you. It kind of jumps out at you, exaggerates the effect. I'm looking at the clouds to see if there's anything that just doesn't make sense. Maybe I was a little heavy-handed somewhere. And I was in here. I don't like the way that looks. Now it looks good. So now I've got this effect where I've got the rays, the sun's super crisp. You can actually see the sun now. And the foreground is popping. I'm going to add a little bit more punch to that wave. It's not doing it for me. That looks good. So now the wave is coming into focus. And remember, we started out with an out-of-focus image. So we're trying to mitigate those issues as we move forward. All right, next step is Camera Raw. So I take it back to Camera Raw. You could take it back to Lightroom, but I just found that Camera Raw does just about everything I needed to do at this stage that Lightroom can do. And really all I'm doing is doing the final touch-ups of the colors. I take a look at auto white balance. The reason I do that is I want to see what the algorithm says. Hey, look, you screwed this up or hey, this is too exaggerated. So obviously yellow, it's skewing it to the blue. And so I might take it to heart a little bit and say, OK, well, I'm not going to go negative 50, but I will reduce some of the yellows here. And then it was saying the image was too red, which I don't necessarily agree with because I do want it to be orange. And maybe it was a little too red. So I'm backing off the reds a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it right here with it, just to back off the warmth just a little bit. Maybe I added a little too much earlier. And then I go to the vignette and see if we can modify the vignette a little bit. Because we've already added some vignetting with the dark and light and center tool. And the vignette just really made this image come to life. So that's, that's what it needed. Let's go to the tone curve and let's see if we can... Add a little bit of punch to the highlights without creating banding. You do not want banding. Let's see if we can add a little bit more darks without blowing out the clouds. See, we're still not blowing out on the shadows. We still have we have some room to go on contrast. So we could make super contrast image happen here. And we might just do that because there's not a lot of detail going on. So remember in the, the photographer's initial edit, this whole area was just black, bluish, and we didn't have any detail going on in the clouds. So I'm going to keep pushing the boundaries here of the shadows. And this is why I like doing this edit in the camera raw. Because you never know what you might find when you come back to this image. And find that, okay, there's a ton of contrast left on the table. We can add some back. Now, I'm going to add a little sharpening, noise reduction. Just for good measure. Come back over to the main exposure. Bump it up a bit. 
hit it with even more contrast here. Let's take a look at the vibrance and saturation. Make sure we're not oversaturating. That looks great. So I don't think I even need to mess with the highlights or anything. I usually use the tone curve for that, but you can also adjust here. There might be a little bit of blowout of the color issue that you can back off of it. But really here, this is no right or wrong. You can just take this to the extreme. I can take the blacks back up. I can pull them back down. That looks good with the blacks down. And if you want to add a little more punch, Go to clarity. I think I'm going to soften the image a little bit with some negative clarity. And I think I'm happy with this. So again, hit OK. Now, a word of caution here. I should have duplicated my last layer for the Viveza 2 edit. I've got it set right now where Camera Raw will eat the layer and apply the, the changes to that particular layer. So now I've lost all my progress for Viveza 2, so that's a, that's a lessons learned, but we're, we're not going to really worry about that. And again, I'm going to come back up and I'm going to touch up some of these areas where I think we could do some more highlighting. I'm really focusing on this wave here because that's where that beam's coming down. I want that to be a focal point. And I think that's good. I'm going to go back over here to this cloud. Yes, add some more luminance into these areas where the sun's peeking through. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting super close to the end here. This is where you got to make that final call. Do I spend the next three weeks of my life making micro adjustment after adjustment? Or do I call it a day and say, this is good enough, we're going to post it to Instagram. I've come to the conclusion that if I'm not happy posting it to Instagram, or if I'm not happy printing it, it probably wasn't a good photo to begin with. The exposure wasn't right, the focus wasn't right, or just something wasn't right with it. And so now in my career, my photography journey, I've gotten somewhat of that type of confidence that now I can just say to myself, I just took a crappy photo. And there's just nothing we can do with this. But for this edit today, what I really wanted to demonstrate was how do we go from here to here to here? And that every photographer is going to have their own take on their edits. And there's going to be some best practices that I think we can learn from every photographer. And I've gone through several YouTube videos of myself, gone to photographers that I've respected for years, watched their edits, and I've, I've learned some things from, but I've also come up with some things on my own. So I encourage you to do that as well. There's no right or wrong. If it looks good, it looks good. Print it. I like this now. So this is something I would print. This is something I would post to Instagram. And so good job. This photographer here went out on a limb, sent the raw file in. Let me critique, trash his image, go through it, and put my own take on it. So I have a lot of respect for this person. I have another, another uh, just deep down respect because of where I started shooting JPEGs on this stuff and just struggling with my edits. So for this person to go out, take a photo, go straight to Lightroom, edit it for themselves, congratulations. That is that you're gonna go far. You're gonna you're gonna hit hit the ground running just like this two or three years from now. You're gonna look back at this experience and go, hey, I can do my own video and I'm gonna show you some things on how to edit. <laughs> What do you think? We're done. I did my first edit of a Canon file and I don't think I'm going to be converted to a Canon shooter anytime soon but overall I'm impressed with the dynamic range of this Canon EOS R 24 to 105 millimeter lens and I want to thank the photographer who submitted this image. I'm going to put his details in the information below. Make sure you check out his profile on Instagram, YouTube, anything he decides he wants to give me. I'm going to put it down there. 
follow this guy, support him, because that's what it's all about. Giving each other support and giving the constructive feedback. Good lord, do I need the feedback. I would like you to take your images and go back and re-edit. That's, that's the homework assignment. I'm going to go do the same thing. Because going through this journey today with this photographer who's brand new, I just have nothing but respect for this guy. He went out and took a photo and went straight to Lightroom. I was scared of this process for the first six months, if not a year, taking JPEGs thinking the camera can do all the work for me. So congratulations to you. This image is a great image. It's a great first effort. I hope we've learned some stuff today between the raw file, your edit, and my edit on what went wrong with this photo. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, the notifications, because you don't want to miss another one of these episodes. So I'll see you next time.